Hello, I'm John Muir Laws. I'm a wildlife biologist, artist, and explorer. And today, I want to explore this painting by Tony Foster with you. I want to show you what I see as from a scientist's perspective as well as from the perspective of somebody who spent a lot of time creating my own watercolor paintings. The stuff that I do is on a small scale. And logistically, that is so much easier to do than something like this. But when Tony Foster paints on this scale, the experience that I have looking at the work is a completely different one. When you stand before the real art at this viewing distance, my experience is very much like being right there on the ground. I feel like I'm standing here next to this bed of wildflowers, looking down the hill into the shade. I can hear the waterfall here, and I physically have to crane my neck and tilt my head up to see the mountains in the sky, just as you would if you were in the field actually looking at this. So it very much feels like this is just a window that has been opened into another place in the world. And as I look through this window, I get this incredible sense of depth. And there are several strategies that are being used here that, that allow you to kind of get that sense of sort of seeing space and deep space and deep space. You get a sense of the massiveness of these peaks. And why is that? I want to show you a few of the things that are going on in this picture that allow that magic of that experience to happen. So I stand here, I feel like I'm really looking out at this moment in nature. There are several things happening here that give me this sense of depth. Let's kind of unpack them one at a time. The first is overlap. If you have two objects and you paint them here and here in your picture, your, your, your painting can look flat, like something on the side of the wall of an Egyptian tomb. But if one clearly overlaps the other, you get a sense of space between those. These different planes in a drawing give you that sense of going back. Let's take a look at the planes that Tony Foster is using in this drawing here. So the first that I see is this wedge right in here, this triangle here. Everything is close, and this space here overlaps this hill here, and that overlaps this one here. Then in the background behind that, I have this, and then I think these two are about at the same distance from me. So going back to another plane here, and then looking through those two sentinels to the distant peak behind. As you look at these pictures, get up close and observe the different way that each of these are painted. So each of these sections has a different handling of the paint. And that helps you sort of see it as a distinct mass. And how those paints are handled also gives you a, an additional cue for depth. Let's take a look at what is going on with the vividness of color as we go back in space. Let's start up close, right here in the wedge. The closest flowers are these ones right here around the boulder. Notice how bright and vivid these colors are. Compare these with just a little bit further back on the hill. So here's, these plants are here. Back here, same species, we're probably looking at the same species, but this is a much more sort of pale blue. This bright orange in here, we're seeing, and these, these reds, we're seeing some of the same species back in here, but they're just ghosted back a little bit. And the result is that you see these bright colors as being close to you, and those more muted ones as being further back. So even just in this little wedge here, he's already starting to pull the viewer into the space of the picture. He's going to trick you into seeing three-dimensional uh, space on a flat piece of paper. So then we jump back here to this. Notice that a lot of the oranges, the warm yellows and things, those are dropping out. We're getting purples and greens right in here. All right. Here, this one, this hill back here is more muted. And then as you get back here, 
you sort of you look at the same kind of colors of green, you're getting increasingly muted as you drop boom, boom back into space there. So that's another cue that you have that you're, you're dropping into the space of the painting. Another trick that artists can use is to use the same shape, a repeated shape, as a reference point. And in this case, these trees do that really well. So the tree, we see this one here, he's intentionally got one that's up here close to you. So you so this is a tree. Well, if this is another tree, these ones must be a little bit further away because they're that much smaller. So we go from big to medium size to smaller. So right up here on this first ridge, he's saying these are close to you, these are further back, and these are even further back here. Notice that these ones here are tucked behind this little ridge. Then drop back onto the next ridge. And that shows you that this is closer than this because these trees are bigger than those. Then you look back even further in the painting. You have these trees here. Trees again here, but now there's just these tiny little indications of them. So something as big as this back here is just a tiny little flick of the brush. So that also just gives you this sense of deep space. Want to point out one other strategy that is being used here that helps you kind of get that, that sense of depth. It's one more trick about how the paint is handled. When you put a lot of detail into a part of a picture, that part of the picture visually pulls forward. So take a look at this little strip here on the bottom. These are a close up of the wildflowers around you. These little wildflowers down here, you've got all the details of all those little petals dropped right in here. That detail says this is close. So we go from this, this would be what's right at your feet, to just looking out. As I look up, he's going to change the way he handles detail in this picture. And a great example of it is just looking at these distant mountains right back here. Compare how this is handled with this back here. So here, we've got these craggy peaks, there are cracks between the rocks, those are filled with windblown snow. Further back here, in addition to just being a paler wash of paint, the amount of detail that's back here is at a lower level. So there's less detail back here. The, so in here he's using a lot of what, what appears to be, I think he's putting some masking fluid down, so that's sort of like a, a rubbery gum-like um, uh, paint that you can put onto your painting and then paint over that. The paint that you put over that doesn't stick where you put that gummy substance down. And then you can get a little eraser and remove that gummy substance and then repaint over that. So he's using that technique here in these peaks and that gives you these very sharp, clear, crisp, white edges between those little cracks in the snow. But when I look back here on this distant peak, I think we, we've got less of that masking fluid and more of just directly painting with the brush. So that gives you very crisp, sharp edges out here, a little bit softer back here. Finally, there is paint that is splattered in here, and apparently even masking fluid that is splattered right back in here. So on these two, there's a splatter technique that's going on that gives you extra texture. That with the masking fluid gives you a ton of detail on these two peaks. And you drop back here on the peak and the glacier that flows down in front of it. Those are just done with more simple shapes, again, giving you that sense of depth. The result is a window into this moment in time. Again, you've got that feeling of being here on the ground. You look down into the valley and you raise your eyes to the heavens above, just as you would if you were standing on the ground next to Tony as he painted this picture.